I am having a day, you guys. Hi, and welcome back to my channel. <laughs> I was knuckle deep into this video and my phone just turned off. Also, I deleted a, a, a video that I had already made. I'm having a day. The fact that I haven't had a nervous breakdown is a miracle. Anyways, we are here today because I wanted to start off my series for my uh, Halloween extravaganza on my channel. And maybe it's a good thing my phone turned off and I have to redo it because I don't think I brought the energy last time. But anyways, we are here to talk about horror movies. So this is the beginning of my horror movie series on this channel. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be breaking down the horror genre in the movie industry and turning them into bite-sized sub-genre pieces. I'm going to tell you my top two for each genre. I'm going to tell you why I like them. I'm also going to tell you if they're scary and if they're gory. Because what I found is that movies that are scary and or gory either tend to attract people or repel people and I want you to know what you're getting into. Also, a lot of the movies that I'm going to be, I guess, recommending you may have already seen because they're older and the, the sad reality is that Hollywood spews out a lot of garbage when it comes to the horror genre, which is a shame. But yes, I've waited through so many bad movies to get to the good ones, the juicy ones, the ones that I'm going to share with you. If I fail to mention a movie that you think should be in my top two, please tell me down below in the comments. We can discuss. We can come back to that topic later, whatever you guys would like to do. But in today's video, what I'm going to start off with is something that I think a lot of people may enjoy, and that is the subgenre of vampires. Vampires are were created to attract, allure, bring in. They have this air of just maybe sexiness and you just want to be near them. They're charismatic and all for good reason because they're luring you in to kill you and take your life. <laughs> um, Vampires are a fun genre because you can take vampires in any kind of direction. And I'm going to, I'm going to be recommending two very different vampire movies. I want you to tell me if you agree with my choices or you don't. So number one, my number one vampire movie and happens to be my favorite movie of all time. And that is Interview with the Vampire. Interview with the Vampire came out in the early 90s, and I watched it as a child uh, when it came out on HBO. I don't remember exactly how old I was, but I was pretty young to be watching a movie like that. Don't come for my mom, though. She didn't know. <laughs> I watched a lot of horror movies that she didn't know about. Interview with the Vampire. Is it scary? No, it is not scary. Well, Okay, so the scariness, the horror part of Interview with the Vampire is of a newly made vampire having to come to terms with the fact that in order for him to survive, he has to take the lives of others. And that in itself is truly horrific. But it, the movie itself is not out to scare you. It plays more like a drama. Is it gory? No memory serves me right, it is not gory. There's actually very little bloodshed considering this is a vampire movie. Um, so if you're not into gore and you don't want to be scared, this is a great movie. It's more like a drama. It's more of a period piece. It takes place over several decades because obviously vampires live a long time. And it is a very well made movie. The soundtrack is amazing. The musical score just the directing and it is a movie based on the novel by Anne Rice. I tried to read Anne Rice a few times in my 20s and it just no hate on Anne Rice fans it just wasn't my cup of tea. I don't know I might not be mature enough to read something like that. <laughs> She's a good writer though she made amazing characters and that's what I want to talk to you guys about next. The acting. The acting in this movie was amazing it was phenomenal in my opinion so good. So the one of the main characters is Lestat. Now here's the problem. <laughs> Tom Cruise was cast to play Lestat. And the people that came to the movie ha having read the books already kind of had an impression of what Lestat is supposed to look like because in the books he is described as a very handsome vampire man. And some people don't think 
Tom Cruise is a very handsome man to be playing that role. And this happens quite a bit in Hollywood. Um, Christian Grey from Fifty Shades of Grey, the, the actor that plays him, a lot of people did not agree with that, that casting choice be, based on looks. Another one, um, Twilight. In Twilight, Edward Cullen, the main vampire man, is supposed to be very, very attractive. And they cast Robert Pattinson to play Edward. A lot of people not okay with that. They didn't think he was handsome enough. But here's the thing. When you read a book, you have a certain image in your mind. And a casting director cannot possibly appease everyone <laughs> that's read the books. So I would say try to look get past the looks and really focus on the acting because I really do think that Tom Cruise did a very wonderful job playing the character of Lestat. Whether you love him or hate him or think he's crazy, he did a really good job playing Lestat. The next character I want to talk about is Louis and Louis is a newly made vampire played by Brad Pitt. Oh, Brad Pitt in the early 90s, you guys, he was so good looking. I mean, he still is, but he's like, he's like in his 50s. Like, you guys, we're getting old. At least my generation and back, we're getting old. <laughs> such a good look. I loved him in that movie, okay? I had such a crush on him when I was like 11 or 12 or however, how, however old I was. Um, but here's what broke my heart. I found out years later that Brad Pitt tried to break his contractual obligation to the movie because he didn't want to play this, the, the character anymore. Why? Because it was a downer. <laughs> it was depressing. He made it, it made him sad, apparently. Like, okay, he's an actor, right? Isn't that his job? <laughs> Did he not know going into this character in this movie role that it was not going to be all shits and giggles and happy time? I digress. My point is, I kind of like, it kind of bummed me out a little bit that my favorite movie actor at the time, my favorite movie, and he didn't even want to do it. <laughs> but still, I love him in that movie and I always will. Anyways. He did a good job too, despite all of that. And then we got to talk about Kirsten Dunst. She plays the character of Claudia and Claudia in the books is five years old. She's turned into a vampire when she's five. Obviously you can't get an actress that's only five years old to do the kind of acting that needed to be required. They got Kirsten Dunst. She was only 11. She was 11 years old and she was spewing these lines on her script that just she probably didn't even understand them herself at the time. But she did an amazing and convincing, in my opinion, job of doing that. So I think Interview with a Vampire is my number one choice. My second choice is completely different. And that movie is also an older movie. And it is The Lost Boys. Now, if you've never seen The Lost Boys, you need to go watch it right now because it is a cult classic and it is a vampire movie about a mom who has to go move in with her with her father and her two boys. And it's kind of like <laughs> a coming of age story for the older the older son, but with vampires pretty much. <laughs> so he tries to fit in to the new town, the new way of life, and he runs into these young boys that are vampires. And this movie is so good that if you don't know it, I am surprised. But you might be younger and maybe you, you've never heard of it. I don't know. It features the two Corys, Corey Haim, rest in peace, Corey Feldman. And it also has, <clears throat> A young Kiefer Sutherland swoon. I don't remember the guy who plays Michael, but I'll put his name down here out of respect for the cast. So hot. Let me tell you, this movie, come for the eye candy. Come for the eye candy, stay for the plot. If you're into girls, if you're more into like the female persuasion, the woman actress that plays Star, gorgeous, drop dead gorgeous. 
Anyways, come for the eye candy, stay for the plot. It's a good movie. It is, um, it has its funny moments, which is nice because it breaks the tension, you know? Is it scary? There are a couple scenes that are a little bit intense with scary faces, but I don't think it's scary. I mean, unless you are the faint of heart and a boo would scare you, then it's not scary. Is it gory? I don't believe it is. Uh, I don't remember anything that really sticks out to me that's gore. There might be like a 10 second scene that you could probably just blink your eyes and it's over, but I don't believe so. It's been a while since I've seen these, so you'll have to forgive me. But so those are my top two picks for vampire movies. What did you guys think? Did I do good? Did I miss the boat? Is there a vampire movie that you think should be at the top two? You let me know down in the comments below and maybe we can, re we can reconsider that. So that's all I have for you guys today. And stay tuned because there will be more horror genre movies in this series for this month. And I hope you guys like this series. Let me know, am I doing a good job? Do you not like or care for it? Also, I'm challenging myself that if you don't like horror movies, I think I could still probably find a horror movie for you. Stay tuned for next, next episode. We're gonna be talking about werewolves and then we're gonna move on to something completely different. I have these all lined up in my head, so stay tuned for that, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for putting up with all my weirdness, my randomness, and all the weird shenanigans I do on my channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.